Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. We're going to look at Peanuts, the art of Charles Schultz. But first... Jim, let's get... What's complimentary to that, Ed? Let's get incongruent with our <laughs> plugs up front, man. The Red Room comics are available for pre-order right now. It's the comics project I'm working on now and for uh, the foreseeable future because there's going to be a uh, year's worth of these suckers. Twelve issues are going to be coming out and uh, thousands of people have pre-ordered the first issue as we speak. A lot of crossover with the Peanuts crowd, I think. Look at that pentagram. <laughs> Charlie Brown will have thoughts about that <laughs> shit right there, Ben. But I have a link tree in the description below this video where you can go through Fantagraphics, put in your pre-order. If you want to read the comic today, uh, go to patreon.com slash edpiscord. The link is there as well. Three bucks to get you the archive. You can read two whole issues that are up there now. I'm serializing new pages every uh, Tuesday. We joke about the link to Peanuts, but who published the complete Peanuts? Yeah, at my very first SPX, uh, they were uh, putting out the very first volume of uh, Peanuts, and somebody raised their hand during the Q&A and said, approximately, approximately how much of your catalog is uh, being published on the strength, the, the money that you're bringing in from Peanuts volume number one? And Gary Groth got on the mic and said, approximately all of it. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. That was a big launch, man. Pretty awesome. Uh, I am also on Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can find some of my out-of-print mini-comics and zines available for download there. Uh, I put up lots of original art, process stuff, notes, even sometimes notes on uh, cartoonist kayfabe. So Rambo 3.5 is the latest mini-comic that I've posted for anybody who subscribes to my Patreon. You can download a PDF of, of this mini-comic. Uh, and you can find that at patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Jim being choosy with the pages that get seen on this Peanuts video. <laughs> tasteful. Tasteful, Ed. Uh, so this is this is a cool comic, This came or a cool book. This came out in 2001. Uh, Charles Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, had died in 2005. And the creators of this book, primarily Chip Kidd, was given access to Charles Schultz's studio and uh, brought along his photographer to go in and put this together. And it's really amazing. It's kind of this um, scrapbook as put together by, you know, a designer with a with a great eye to go through and, and share this stuff. And I thought that's what we would do is just kind of do a flip through here and uh, get to see a plethora of Peanuts artwork and some interesting insights, as well as Chip Kid's design and photography thing, which... He had done Batman the Animated Series book, which took a similar approach of just calling a lot of different, informa different information sources, sketches, photos, figures, all this stuff. How do you make that into something that makes sense graphically? And he did it with the Plastic Man, the Jack Cole book with Art Spiegelman. So he was figuring this out, and I fell in love with this stuff because, one, I'm coming from a design background, had a design job at the time, but I love this kind of stuff, like photographing comic art makes it look a little bit differently. I was starting to see this treatment online and, and really mauling it over my head and trying to understand it and how I could use it in my own work because I thought it looked good. But also, it's almost comics. You know, he's taking all of these different pieces of, of graphic information and how do you arrange and compose them. So that's one of the things that a book like this really kind of speaks to me about. The other part is the subject. You get to see stuff like this, you know, a, a Charles Schultz pencil drawing blown up. You know, I, this looks like it's several times the size of the actual artwork and you get to see it in this raw state. I loved it, you know, and this book is full of this. Just look at that image. I mean, there's there's life in those drawings. It's incredible. And the way like the scribble marks, because we're familiar with peanuts, we can look at this and see what it what it may become. But if you just saw this like on a on a scrap of paper, it's so loose. Yeah. Also, this is this is how you can draw whenever you've been drawing these characters for, for 50 years and you know them. This is the information you need to just kind of lay out your composition and go. But, uh, you know, the thing to admire as we flip through this again is just this photography. We do a lot. You look at artist editions. Typically, those are scans. Um, there's something about the photography. And uh, Jeff Spear is the photographer that Chip Kit has worked with on lots of volumes. And uh, I think it's noteworthy because you see all of this detail. I mean, look at the color for the blue on his shorts. You know, we often point this out, um, used to the dots for coloring, but this is another technique or another uh, screen that would be used for, to achieve these. So those little details are something that first part that hits me whenever I look at this book. So uh, so that artwork is, is not scanned. No, this is all photographed as far as I know. They're 
I don't. I, I think it might all be photographed. I don't know that there are any exceptions to that. Uh, introduction by Charles Schultz's widow, Jean Schultz. Um, I mean, we can't we can't overstate peanuts in the effects that has on comics history. As you opened, Ed, you know, Gary Groth talks about the impact it had on fanographics. Uh, tell me if I'm being too dramatic to say there might not be a fanographics today if they didn't get that peanuts license. Yeah, quite possibly, man. They 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 had a lot of dire straits like in the late '90s. You know, that was a bleak period, early 2000s, pretty tough, and. And uh, the Peanuts books definitely saved the day. I love these kinds of things of like the printed panel blown up where you get to see all the all the printing issues. And they're going to be like, we're going to get into, you know, lots of these strips where we'll see some of those. But there are stories of like things like Charles Schultz's minimal style was so odd to engravers and stuff. There'll be strips that are printed without eyes because it looked like it was a speck and the engraver would fix it. Right. Yeah. Burnish it off. Yeah. And like seeing it up close like this, this is the stuff that you, when you're playing around with this kind of Mm -hmm. old Lichtenstein style, when you realize like the black is not black. Right. You know, there's color in there and, uh, our, uh, Good pal Tom Chioli, he he calls it a uh, skin cancer black. <laughs> <laughs> I also like seeing the range because Schultz, he draw for fifty years. You know, uh, that's quite an evolution of style, and and you can see it in a book like this that's showing us examples from those fifty years. But this is also the ephemera that I love from this book is when you get access to his studio, you get to take pictures of tools and things that were still. Uh, in place, you know, whenever whenever he got access to this. So. Yeah, and look, just a Ticonderoga pencil, nothing special. Peanuts bandage. <laughs> that dude's got money, man. <laughs> that dude's got money for days. Yeah, I love all this stuff. I love seeing the ink worked up onto the pen nibs as well. You know, it really shows... Uh, look at young Sparky. Working cartoonist, man, you know, that's, that's an ink-covered pen. Yeah, there's background on his... You know, biographical kind of background, yearbook photo. Oh, this is famous. <clears throat> this is a very famous exercise. The idea was the art instructor was like, you have like 10 minutes, you know, you have five minutes, drop three of anything. Yeah, and there's a quote from the art teacher who says, these were spectacular because they were things you wouldn't even think of. Exactly. And it means that his mind was working every minute. He isn't worried about what's going on the paper. It's in his mind. It's got to come out. Yeah. That's pretty cool, right? For sure. Yeah, that's a super famous. Like, that's in a lot of books. And pro- I wonder if it's a different quote in every book, too. Yeah, I don't know. You know, we're going to get it. The bulk of this book is Peanuts, but you do get this extra stuff. So this was a sketchbook he kept when he was in the military, you mm-hmm. know, World War II. And it, it oscillates between uh, realistic kind of observational drawings versus the cartoony drawings. He was an instructor. I think that was a cor- correspondence course that he would be one of the instructors in. Is that he was an instructor? Yeah, one of his first jobs, 1945. Took a job as an instructor at his alma mater in St. Paul, Art Instruction Inc. Mm. Yeah, I think that's probably the same thing as like the draw the turtle, draw the pirate mm-hmm. spot. Yeah, uh, New Yorker kind of style drawing, working with washes. So a lot, a lot of. Uh, like I said, early examples of stuff that must have been around in the studio and the records and who knows, flat files. Yeah, I think his early work like showed up in uh, um, like a Saturday Evening Post or something like that. Yeah, I think that's true, right. And if I were uh, more conscientious, I could point to those because they, they do spell it out. Yeah, That's a classic one. Absolutely love it, and it's a beautiful, you know, it's a photograph. It's a very, very nice uh, image, version of this image. Yeah, but it's him cutting promos on comics, which he which he does, which he would do regularly. He wasn't a fan of the comic book. It was uh, vulgar vulgar trash to him. So if you want to boost the numbers to your Instagram or something like that, you just take one of those images and post it on your thing, and if the right people see it, you're going you're gonna to get more hits on your shit than you usually do. Yeah. Too intense for young children, these comics. <laughs> So he's like one of the parents that is like, yeah, Frederick Wortham is right. I don't know, man. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> there was certainly some, uh, you know, some some contrast between, say, the newspaper cartoonist and the comic book artist. Yeah, they the were bougier. Period. This is another one of those things like break out the camera. Let's look at some tools. Very awesome to see this. And this was a lettering pen. This is a C5. I think there were 
five or six of these nibs, the, the bigger numbers were the bigger tips, but this is what he used for lettering. And look at that ink is caked on there, man. Yeah. Decades of, of ink on that nib. That's the thing. Like the Hunt 102, you got to you gotta change that every three, four pages. But those big flat nibs, you could use that thing forever. Like it's not going to dull or it, it is dull. Yeah. It's, it, it's going to be this tip forever unless you do something drastically wrong. And uh, famous for whenever the, the pen nibs that he liked, whenever the company announced that they were going out of business, he bought all of them. 914 radio nib. And where you can find this, if you're ever curious, I've done this before, you can buy lots of nibs on eBay, old vintage nibs. Many of them are in really good shape because the metal used to be of higher quality. Right. So, you know, if you're curious about playing with pens and especially some of these older and different nibs besides the Hunt 102, um, that's one way to get some, some pen nibs and experiment with that. All right, man. Starting to get close here. <laughs> it, it, it's so much more detailed than what, like, Peanuts became, you know? Yeah, it's one of the revelations, again, for looking at this stuff over, you know, a book that, that surveys kind of like the 50-year history. You get to really see that. Uh, there's, there are a couple of notes that a lot of these Peanuts strips are from Chris Ware's collection. Chris Ware, a friend of uh, Chip Kidd, lent them to Chip Kidd for the purpose of constructing this book. And I, they don't answer this, but I'm curious about how these are all arranged. Um, you know, we often see, look, there's the example I mentioned of like a burnisher might lose an eye or something. There are several of these, you know, throughout, but uh, that's a pretty good example of that. <laughs> um, and I think they talk about it, you know, the, the, the printer would correct this because they thought it was dirt on the plate. Yeah, don't, don't get that out of there. Right. Get, get that one right there out of there. I would kind of like to ask that printer a question or two about this because how do you not recognize that's an eye it's why'd you leave this one here yeah, if you thought this was wrong it's ridiculous it is it's it's very silly um but i like the preservation of the strips you know something that people used to do we've looked at strip collections at the billy island where it'd just be like the the block you know someone had cut out each daily strip and then they save them by year and you can buy those things on ebay mm -hmm. um before everything started to be reprinted that's kind of how you you know that's why Chris Ware collected these take because a, it wasn't Fanographics hadn't started doing the, the complete peanuts. Yeah, man. Take, take a look in any uh, studio photo of like an older cartoonist and you'll see the little shoebox with Nancy, 1934 to 1944. You mentioned more detail, Ed. This is one of the early Sunday strips and you can see it everywhere here. Detailed rugs, the steps. Look at that perspective steps. You don't yeah. see a lot of perspective in peanuts. But whenever he did it, it looked good. These early... Early examples remind me of stuff like, um, uh, you know, John Stanley or something. Yeah. You know, little Lulu comics and stuff. They're very lively and yeah. very colorful. I really like the color Sundays. And also just like um, slick, like very, very slick inking. I mean, look how beautiful that is for color. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I wonder about the, uh, the setup for photographing these. You know, part of that is lighting them. Mm-hmm. And... and you know, that's why you get a professional photographer to do this. But it definitely looks great. It looks very warm. I think that's a uh, a part of this. And I wonder, this is probably film photography, right? Like, this pre-digital? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you could have been shooting digital at 2001, but it's it's very possible. It's, it's shot on film. With how big these images are, that would require a lot more megapixels than you might have been able to get your hands on. Yes, and also um, they might have been shooting on slide film because mm -hmm. that's how you would shoot art. Um, that information might be in here and if it's not, you can probably find that kind of process information, this this how-to stuff because Chip Kid's one of those guys like how many people copied this aesthetic? Yeah. I credit him with a lot of this stuff but a lot of people, there were a lot of imitators and he may not have invented it but it's it's the, the he populated it in my mind. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it was a different way to look at these comics. So I flagged this for that little Lulu comparison. To me, this is just fun, colorful action. There's a lot more action and movement, I think, in some of these early strips. Even the word balloon has that kind of action uh, movement in it. It's really cool. So the bulk of this book are these strips. And there'll be commentary on various things, themes, where characters came up, how those characters evolve, you know, Lucy uh, starting out as a baby and quickly becoming what we know as, as Lucy. So I'm going to kind of like jump ahead through some of these things uh, in the interest of, of time 
and avoiding some of the repetition. And I have flagged different things. In this case, I think that's a really funny Linus strip. Spent too much time watching the television too close. This was something I used to hear as a kid. Watching too much television could damage you. So I guess I wasn't the only one that heard it. Who knows? Maybe it started here. This is pretty cool. Original art strips. And you can really see like the washes in the ink and the way the ink is laid down differently around the shapes that, you know, you want to want to keep that line nice and crisp around Charlie Brown's head so you can see that little halo of ink around there. But how cool is it to see these things blown up? And these are probably... Uh, a little bigger than actual size, but awesome to see them like that. You know, a whole a whole daily strip's worth spread across four pages, which goes back to the book design part that I mentioned at the top of the show. How do you make this stuff interesting? You know, you could just have same size, reprint the strips throughout, which, you know, Complete Fanographics uh, collection does. But that's not what this book is. You know, and as an art book, it's sort of like, how do you make it interesting and how do you keep presenting this stuff in a way that continues to engage the audience? As a designer, that's what I was looking at. It was one of the things that attracted me. Yeah, like, uh, you think about the uh, the, the um, artist editions that you get your hands on of, of, like, some great work that you like. Let's say the EC one or something, right? And, and you're going through it. By page 15, there is a kind of a white noise that happens because it's the repetition of seeing the same, which is ridiculous to say. You it would is. Never, you would never think you would say something like that, you know, before having your hands on that book. But this prevents you from lulling into just that that drone, the, 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 the white noise page flip, because the, he breaks it up. And if you do stop and read any of these, they're all fantastic. You know, like, like great from Charlie the Brown fighting about this. Uh, who, who's who's the real author, a creator of this snowman? And uh, she's going to take her half home. <laughs> Such a funny gag. Um, I thought this was noteworthy. This is a the original panel and then the panel that he ended up using where it's, you know, most college players are bigger than us. Definitely that illustrates that gag better than the uh, the original, the first version. Although the concept's there, little tiny figures. That kind of insight is, is really great. And then more of this ephemera, right? Like comic book versions and collections of the peanut strips. Another example of the great color that was available on these Sundays. Look at how this blue is more saturated. I don't know how that happens. You know, there would be these just like beautifully watercolored uh, little Nemos. And it's it's a different... Pro, like I think that it's like those not it's not the, just those cut um, screen toads, but it's like the washes over top of like se like several plates per color. Yeah, I also love the motion and the simplicity of the cartooning, like how these just couple of lines capture all of that. This is pretty wild looking colors. Yeah, not so you great. can you can see the bad printing and stuff. Like look at the blacks, how uneven they are yeah and just like make make the saturated magentas the the darkest color and super off register <laughs> is that a trollton comic all right so i flagged a couple of uh pages here because we're going to see precipitation something that artists do and uh always fun to see in comics starting with rain but look at the rain man on these and this is some of the inventiveness that i like with schultz simplicity like his style is so simple, it's almost like a set of rules to, to do this completely pared-down style. But how do you handle some of this? And I love the, uh, the like the silhouette of the figures in the rain, in the hat, in that hat, vertical hatch lines. There was this uh, free comic book day that Fanta put out about like you know unseen peanuts or something like that, and it was a 32-page comic that collected like a bunch of strips that like are off model for peanuts, you know, weird starry nights, like just yeah. things that were done one once and like never done again. Definitely worth checking out. Man, I need to find that now before we post this video, <laughs> <laughs> but snow always talk about snow. I think the snow is really cool. It's very Zen looking through uh, Sh Charles Schultz's style. You know, it just kind of floats there. It's polka dots. It's like they're all evenly spaced and Snoopy playing on ice big hockey fan love it lots of motion but look at the lettering for wham that's pretty great wake me up before you go go <laughs> this is a, a, a fun part so he did this book not sure when this comes out but i need all the friends i can get obviously peanuts lots of book collections of this stuff even original stuff this is almost a graphic novel because it's all themed and original but it's the pencil drawings 
it's the pencil roughs versus like the printed finished pieces. And he drew them in this horizontal sketchbook, but the book was printed like the size. So a spread was like one page, but you get to see the pencils of this book, and you know, like him writing this, this story. Uh, how cool is that? Yeah. Like, so it's for a, a, it's not for a strip. No, it's, it's a book that ended up, you know, being printed like this, but you can see kind of like his s- script roughly, yeah. la- you know, like writing it in the drawing stages you can see the page notations for uh you know which pages are which yeah you know a friend is someone who accepts you a friend is someone who accepts you so you can kind of see how that even evolves yeah i love it it's a weird object you know big sequence with with uh, snoopy and they talk about how some of these ideas work their way in so as he's writing he might work you know this may be a rough concept but then this will be distilled into a four panel four panel strip or a character will come out of that kind of uh i don't know mind wandering sort of writing process wow look how loose that stuff is yeah it so still good. reads it does so i dig all of these things it's it's just the pieces that you don't always see hatching snoopy in his dream world his line man like it's paid, one of a kind you paid money to get that line this is a flag of, of that pencil line. You know, there's the blow up in the beginning that we looked at, but I'll look at all this. I'll look at this stuff all day. Uh, I'd look at a whole book of this stuff, you know. He wasn't using Ticonderoga there, man. That's a Palomino Blackwing 155 if I've ever seen. <laughs> I love it. Uh, just a panel that I thought looked really good. Um, it's funny, you know, we, we gang record these things, and I it calls to mind we had looked at Batman Year One, and there's a panel of characters running through the woods, calls to mind Alex Toth, war comics from, from DC Comics of silhouettes running through woods. Funny to think of Charles Schultz in that context of, like, using silhouettes really well. It helps to see it blown up like this, taken out of context. Yeah. More of that writing process and originals for, for some Snoopy stuff, so... This is, is is a book that I've looked at ever since I, I picked it up whenever it first came out and continue to look through it because I think the variety that Chip Kid lays this stuff out and presents it, um, it's very easy to get sucked in. This is almost like a favorite movie, a real watchable movie where you catch it halfway through and end up watching the, the second half of it. Right. Uh, same kind of deal with this book. Very easy for me to uh, to spend time going through it. And more of these sketches, I think near, you know, towards the end of his life, um, Charles Schultz, you know, known for having that that shakiness, and you can see it in in the later strips. You know, it still comes through, although his lettering looks pretty good. So something that he that he worked to uh, to control as much as possible, but allowed into the drawing part. You know, it's interesting to contra- contrast your lettering, which is crisp and sharp, with the line drawings, which had much more of a wavy line. And I started reading him in the newspaper whenever it was wavy line stuff. Yeah. So when I started seeing reprints of like the old stuff. It was different, you know. Yeah. Like I had, I liked this style. This Me is too. what I, had, what I had learned, what I came up with. Um, now I like it all, but uh, I didn't have it all back then. So it, it goes through periods too. Like I, I don't know, like what what he had going on with him or whatever. But it's like there's a period in like the early '80s where the rhythms of the tremor or whatever were so even that uh, the strips kind of look like Atari, like eight bit. You yeah. know, it's like these perfect like pixelated looking heads for a small window of time before they the line gets unfortunately more wobbly so there you go and there's um you know there's context throughout here we kind of gloss over a lot of the text but there are things correspondence things that he's reading you know creative process stuff there was a um there was a, a book or maybe a book isn't right there was there was like an essay that he had written and it was about putting together comic strips and so, you know, there's lots of writing by him out there. That's something that is worth tracking down and reading his thoughts on how you actually build and create a comic strip like Peanuts, um, which is something that, you know, it's, it's, it's excerpt, excerpted in this, yeah. uh, which is what, what brings it to mind. But There's like that famous cool. thing about, uh, you know, a professional can come up with a four-panel strip in a day or something like that. I love this part. It's the drawing board of Charles Schultz, July 2000. So... I don't know if he used it for all 50 years, but uh, I'm sure there are some decades that have chipped away that surface varnish of that board and down into the raw wood. It's amazing. Like uh, I love this kind of stuff. 
I, I drew every comic page I ever drawn, like, on the same table. Like, I'm assuming that... Well, actually, no, I have one of your drawn tables here. I've gone through several drawing tables. I, I have one that I mainly use that somebody gave me, um, and it works, you know, I'm happy with it. So, yeah, you find a drawing table, they last, you know? <laughs> so there's no reason to replace them once you have one you like. But uh, I love this kind of stuff. Reminds me of, you know, like, we've seen some of Jack Kirby's old 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 work, and... You know, logged a lot of hours, uh, 50 years of drawing a comic strip, man. A lot of hours logged at those, at the, on those drawing surfaces. Yeah, great book, though. Very cool. Won't be the last Chip Kid that we probably look at, and I'm sure it won't be the last Charles Schultz that we look at. You got a couple of the hardcovers? I do. All right, cool, man. We'll just we'll pick a month. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, K-Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What you got, Jimmy? Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. You can find my mini comics, zines, artwork, behind the scenes stuff, and uh, notes on cartoonist kayfabe. Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Red Room is available for pre order. It's going to be coming out in May, but you could uh, secure yourself a couple of copies right at this very moment. Uh, hit my link tree in the description below. Uh, next to it is the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Uh, you could Check out the uh, comics as they're serializing every Tuesday. Two issues are up there as of uh, this recording. Three bucks get you the archive. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with all the Cartoonist Kayfabe news that's coming up in 2021. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give them one more set of marching orders, Jimmy. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.